Hi, and welcome to another video teaching you how to play Lawyer Up Season 2. This video, we're going to talk about case number six, which is actually one of the simplest cases uh, in this particular box to play. It's actually the one we recommend if you're new to the game that you play first. So we're going to start with a quick setup, and then I'll go over some of the rules for this case. Um, but we should keep this one pretty short because it is one of the simpler, it is the simplest case in season two, in my opinion. Uh, so as always, the first thing you're gonna do is after you select your case, you're gonna make sure each player has sort of the components that go with their side. So the prosecution should have their base deck and their tokens. Defense should have their base deck and tokens, etc. cetera. Uh, this case, you're gonna give the prosecution Sam Howard. It's a double-sided card. They can choose which side they want their client to be face up. Um, and the defense will be Adrian McKenzie, also double-sided. So I'll be playing the prosecution. So I'll take Sam Howard down here and then I'll place Adrian up here for now. Now, once each player has their components on either side, the next thing that players are gonna do is you're gonna take your strategy cards and you're going to each secretly choose a strategy. So for the defense, we'll randomly pick one. Let's say they played this one face down. The remaining strategy cards can be returned to the box. You won't need them that game, strategies never change. Uh, and then we would pick a strategy as well. Let's go with Internet Empire. So each player secretly chooses a strategy. Once both people have selected their strategy, you can play them face up. And the reason we primarily need these strategies is because they're going to list the witnesses we need. So we have Adrian and Sam on the top of each one. So we've already given those to each player. And then the defense also needs Toby Keith, Kristen Fox, and Christine Wiseman. So we need Toby Keith. Christine, they're playing Dirty Laundry, so they're going to have some more salacious people. Uh, so those are the three witnesses that come with them. And then we have... Thomas, Maki, and Senator Joe Powell. So all the witnesses you're not playing with, you can shuffle. Here, we'll place the judge over here. We'll place this deck of witnesses right behind the judge off camera, but you may need to draw from there. But the witnesses in this case will be here and here. Sorry, I'm reorganizing here. Oh, that's how I should do it. There's a nice diagram that makes it look nicer in the box that I should use. So that's how I'll set it up. We'll shift everything up a little bit. Now, once you do that, each player has their own attitudes deck. Uh, and you're going to want to randomly shuffle this and just take the top attitude and you can place it down nearby. So after each player starts with an attitude, just make sure you keep the remaining attitudes off. It doesn't need to be near your play area, but there are some card effects that will have you draw attitudes or discard attitudes. Um, so just keep that in mind. You don't, you don't want to return them to the box. Next, 
You're going to want to set up the assets that you're fighting over in the divorce case. There are 10 cards. The most important thing is that house and business The most important thing is that house and business are on the same value. So in this case, we flipped over the seven side, which is fine. They just, you can't have one be equal to 10 and one be equal to, you want them to be the same value in the top right. I just randomly deal out the rest of them because I find it easier with setup to have them all out. because you're gonna to need to go back to your strategies and make sure the correct side is face up. So you basically just go down the list one to one. So in both cases, the number one priority thing is stocks. So stocks are, is up in both cases. Uh, then our second thing is yacht and money. So we have money up. I do not see yacht. So we would flip yacht over. Private jet would turn to yacht. And then last but not least, we have private jet and private jet. So private jet competes with lot yacht. So yacht's gonna take precedence since it's at a level two. Uh, and everything else that we randomly set out is fine. Then you're gonna take the 12 bias tokens and shake them up randomly. And you're gonna place each token on the gray shared spot. So in some cases, there's differing preference. Some, some things are evenly split like these and the dog and the money and the kids and the cat, there's some preference given. The other two biases can be set above the assets or off to the side. There are a few card effects that let you swap bias tokens and you could use those potentially. Now that we've finished up with these, I would give these to each player. Now you sort of finished setup. Uh, the last setup setup here would be to shuffle the case deck and begin discovery. So from here, the game's normal with discovery. You're going to put this in the center table between players and draft evidence. So give us a second here. We will draft this evidence and we'll get to the actual trial phase of the game so you can actually play. But just as a reminder, you're gonna go through this entire deck with each player drawing three, picking a card to keep, one to bury, and one to give to their opponent. Now, once you finish drafting all the evidence, each player will draw, will shuffle their drafted evidence into their base deck, draw five cards, and you're going to take the buried evidence, set it somewhere off to the side of the play area. The judge always starts on the prosecution side, just as a reminder, and the prosecution uh, calls the first witness. In the divorce case, instead of swaying a jury, we are swaying, we are fighting over these assets. And each asset has a different victory point value represented in the top right corner of the asset card. So if I were to win sports car, I would get three victory points. So our goal in this, in this case is to win the most assets on our side to score the most points. Now, the attitude we've been given can change that because for each mind asset, in this case there's only one, the dog, uh, that I won or share, I get two additional victory points. And for each mind claimed witness I get, I also gain a victory point. So I'm going after, I'm in denial and I'm going after that particular icon currently. I mean, that can change. 
Now, the game is over when all of the key witnesses in this case have been called. So there are six up here, key witnesses, and then each of the people of getting divorced is also considered a key witness and will be called over the course of the trial. So with that, um, I will run through a quick round uh, just to show you the last bit, but this is a pretty straightforward case. Uh, I am throwing in the bias objections uh, so you can see how this particular variant works. Uh, it allows you to object to any card that has that symbol, uh, has a symbol on it, but then what happens is, is once you object, you will cover up that bias symbol and will not be able to object to cards with that symbol on in the future. So eventually the cards you can object to will become slimmer and more narrow. So for the sake of examples, I'm going to call Sam Howard um, because I draw an attitude and then discard an attitude. So what I'll do is I've set, a, set over my attitudes off to the side. I'll draw another one, got greedy and in denial, and then I can discard one. Uh, and when you discard it, I would just suggest you put it on the bottom of the attitude pile you have, attitude deck you have off to the side, because I don't think you'd run out, but just in case you did, you know, you'd have extra cards if you were to draw a lot of attitude cards for whatever reason. And because both of these are sort of equal, because they both have one of the symbols that are off, only one of them is on each asset. So because he has a mind, I'll stick with in denial and I'll get rid of greedy and put that on the bottom. Now from here, I've done the called effect. The game is played pretty straightforward like any other case. Um, one of the key words in this case is scandalous evidence. So when you do it, um, you can be a little bit at risk. And the other thing is, is when you call a witness uh, on your strategy card, there are sometimes, if you control a lot of the key assets you're going after, you can get a bonus effect. Um, so if, you're, if I had been winning two or more of my key assets, which are stocks, money, and private jet, I could draw a card at random from the buried evidence. That's not the case currently, because we just started. So we are currently at 10 to two. Now during the questioning phase, players go back and forth playing a card or taking an action. Typically they play a card to their examination to generate uh, victory points. They're gonna play shared custody, the defense. It's an argument. If there are no scandalous cards in your examination, you get to sway a heart. So that would let them sway a heart, potentially stocks over to their side. So. What I'm going to do is I'm going to object and I'm going to say that I object to the heart symbol that's on this card and I'm going to discard that card and after you object to something that player gets to basically completely undoes the action that just happened. It's like it never happened and they have to go again. Okay, this is a good example if I can play it. Let's play this card instead. That'll bring us up to five. Um, and this effect is flip nonprofit to TV royalties. So this nonprofit asset, we're not fighting that for that anymore. That was worth four victory points. We're now fighting over TV royalty point, TV royalties, which is worth five victory points. The bias symbol stays on the exact spot it was on, whether it's shared or two from the right, two from the left, doesn't matter if those Colors change, the important thing is, is that it stays in the exact spot it currently is at. I'm going scandalous cards over here. I'm gonna play this for two. If the current witness is a celebrity, they are, I get to take another action. So I'm gonna go up to 12. And then I'm gonna play moral argument for four, would be for four. But let's say the defense objects to that. So I would discard that. And instead I'll play for the greater good for three, which gets me to 15. The defense goes, you can see this is just sort of the back and forth, pretty straightforward. You know, logical argument for four to nine. 
And then I would actually pass here because I think I have a pretty good lead on them. Uh, so we'll see if the defense can get six more points. The best they can do is four if they play no argument. Gain the judge's favor. Take the pass action, they'll get four, which will take them up to 13. Uh, and that is the end of the round. You resolve witnesses. Uh, you resolve the witness now. Uh, obviously I'm winning 15 to 13. I can trigger victory effects. Uh, draw one attitude, then give one attitude to your opponent. So I'm gonna, I got compromising, I'm gonna keep compromising and I'm going to give this attitude to the opponent. So they actually have two cards they can score off of now, but I have won this. And this victory effect is resolve the victory effect of a card in your opponent's examination. So I'll do this and refresh one of my objectives and get it back. Discard. Discard, and then I have two to sway. So in general, I wanna focus on the assets that are worth the most points to me and the key assets on my thing. So stocks is important, but it would take me five to sway there. So I can't do that. Next important is money, also would cost me five, tough to do. Private jet is not in play. So the best thing I think I can do is since I won by two is to find something I can get for two. I get the sports car for two. It's worth three points to me, or I can go after Fairbanley Heirlooms, which is worth. I want to go after the TV royalties for two. So I'll sway that uh, for two. And then our sidebars would refresh. The defense would get the judge's favor. And then you are free to discard any cards you have in your hand and you're gonna draw back up to five. So draw back up to five, and then the next person would call their witness. So what we're gonna do now is instead of playing through all this stuff, once all the witnesses are gone, they've been called and claimed. We're just gonna randomly split these up. So we played through the whole game and these are the witnesses we've won. And let's just move everything around a little bit. We'll keep a couple things shared. When during closing statements, to score the game at the end of the game, what you do is you're going to look at each of these assets and either give it to the player who scored it or uh, count it up. So I sort of randomly did this for, for an example's sake. So this is on the blue, blue space. So the house will be won by the defense. This is on a red space. So business is won by prosecution, and likewise, this is how this went. If something is shared, I wouldn't give it to either player. Sports car, TV royalties, heirlooms, and yacht. Uh, you're going to want to look at your attitudes as well and at your strategy cards to sort of sum up uh, these points. So we'll just do the prosecution in this example. So I have T review royalties for five, sports car for three, that's eight. Money for eight, but it's on my list and it's worth two additional. So that's 10, so that gets me to 18. 
Business for seven, that's 25. Heirlooms, not on my list, for four, it's 29. Oh, I shouldn't have taken these yet because I, for each asset you've won or gained, I'll have to rewind this. I would also get two additional points for these. Um, and then for each witness that has that symbol, I'd also get an additional point. So all the witnesses I have would get me four more points. So that'd be 33 points plus before I took everything off of this, uh, I should have kept these tokens with each one. Uh, I shouldn't have handed it out yet. Uh, you would score your points up. And whoever has the most points wins the game. So apologize for messing that up, but that's a quick overview of case number six. Again, the most straightforward and symmetrical case. So the one we advise that you start off by playing since the most straightforward, um, if you've never played lawyer up before, or if you're just getting back into it and uh, appreciate you watching these videos. Hopefully uh, this has been a good overview of what you need to play and set up the, this particular case. If there's anything else you want to see, as always, make sure you like and subscribe this video and let us know in the comments uh, what other content we can create for you. Thanks a lot and happy gaming.